you another familiar face. He is the former chairman of the Democratic National Committee and the former governor of the great state of Pennsylvania, Ed Rendell. Good evening, everyone. I want to begin by echoing what Newt Gingrich said. All of you, by being here tonight, are making a strong, strong statement. Three years ago, when I got involved with this movement, someone in the State Department told me, you shouldn't do this. This is just a cult, and it only has about 2,000 followers worldwide. Well, let the State Department officials come here to Paris tonight and see the breadth and the numbers that are here and the passion and the commitment of the people in this room. And the world should know that the people of Liberty and Ashraf are a proud people. Military commanders have told me that when they needed to be, they were fierce warriors. We know they're great builders because they built an incredible city on their own. We know they're great artists and musicians because all of us have heard incredible concerts by a band with women and men sitting side by side playing beautiful, beautiful music. These proud people deserve more than we've given them. And as you've heard over and over again tonight, and as you know, the United States government over a decade ago signed a contract with each and every one of the residents of Ashraf and Liberty saying that if they disarmed, we would protect them. We would protect them with the full faith and credit of the United States government. And for six years, that worked well. And in fact, the residents of Ashraf helped the United States military by giving them information about missions they carried out in Iraq. But then the U.S. government turned over security to the Iraqi government, to the government of Iraq, and all hell broke loose. In 2009, that government, the Maliki government's own forces, attacked the people of Ashraf, a bloody, deadly attack. And the State Department issued a statement condemning the attack. But nothing changed. In 2011, it happened again. Another bloody, brutal attack with the government of Iraq federal police using U.S. vehicles and U.S. weapons. And worst of all, there were American forces right outside Ashraf. And two hours before the attack, they were ordered to retreat. By who? we still don't know. And after the 2011 attack, the State Department issued a statement condemning the attack and calling on the government of Iraq to do differently. But nothing changed. And then the United Nations, the State Department, and we, the American friends of the MEK, we convinced the people of Ashraf to move to liberty. We told them that the UN and the US and the government of Iraq guaranteed their safety at liberty. Let the record show we misled them. We misled them. There's been no attempt to guarantee their safety. In fact, the opposite is true. The government of Iraq has prevented them from taking common sense safety measures, T-walls, protective armor, to protect themselves. And again, death has resulted. We saw an attack in February, a rocket attack in February. And when the rocket attack happened, the State Department issued a statement condemning the attack and calling on the government of Iraq to investigate. Nothing happened. And then the attack of June 15th occurred. And the State Department issued a statement condemning the attack and calling on the government to, of Iraq to investigate. Well, Colonel Wes Martin, one of your heroes, who will speak a little later on, around 10 or 11 tonight, Colonel Wes Martin said to me, asking the government of Iraq to investigate those rocket attacks would be like asking the gangster Al Capone to investigate the St. Valentine's massacre that his people did in, in Chicago. It's ludicrous. It's a joke. We know who sponsored those attacks. And by the way, we don't have to guess anymore. 
Iraqi Hezbollah said that they launched those attacks. And they said, we're going to do it again. And they said, just to make it absolutely crystal clear, I want to give you the exact quote, their commander said, our security operations are conducted upon the guidance of al-Maliki and Khomeini. Case closed. No investigation needed. The Iraq government and the Iran government are the sponsors of the attacks on liberty. And if that isn't enough to cause the United States to act, I don't know what is. Now, after the June 15th attack, I sent an email to a friend of mine who's high up in the State Department, who I bombard with emails about this issue all the time. And I said to him, I said, time to get them out of liberty. How many more have to die before the State Department does something? He sent me back this response. Governor, let's talk. The department is working on a solution to the problem. And I sent him back another email in which I said, thanks for getting back to me, but the only plan is to get them out of liberty. And I know there is some desire for us to be able to persuade the department to move them back to Ashraf. And that's better than staying in liberty. But be absolutely clear about one thing. They will not be safe in Ashraf. They weren't safe in 2009. They weren't safe in 2011. There's only one thing that will guarantee the safety of these brave, proud people, and that's to get them out of Iraq now. Now. Now, you know, there are 33 million refugees around the world. There are refugees from Somalia and Sudan in Ethiopia and Kenya. There are refugees from Burma in Bangladesh. There are refugees from Iraq and Afghanistan in Pakistan. And so someone might say, well, why does the United States, why should the United States airlift these people out of Iraq? And the reason is because we've done it before. This is from the United Nations website about refugees. And it talks about a camp by the name of Dadaab, D-A-D-A-A-B. It's in northeast Kenya on the Kenyan-Somali border. It is the largest refugee camp in the world, almost 500,000 refugees. And I'm reading from the UN report. In 1999, the United States classified the Bantu refugees from Somalia as a priority and the U.S. Department of State began what has been described as the most ambitious resettlement plan ever from Africa, with thousands of Bantus in Dadbab scheduled for resettlement in America. Well, we resettled the Bantus in America. We resettled the Hmong from Cambodia in America. But the Bantus and the Hmong never had the legal and moral word of the United States that we would protect them. We did it because it was the right thing. But the residents of Ashraf and Liberty are even different from the Bantus and the Hmong. They had the word of the United States government, a legally binding contract that we would protect them. We have no choice, and we're going to make this as clear as can be to the State Department, and we're going to keep banging and banging until it gets done. We have no choice but to live up to our obligation, the United States of America, and get these people out of Iraq to safety. They are strong, they are steadfast, they've sacrificed a lot. It is our duty as Americans to do this. We gave our word. Let's honor our word.